two trains are moving with equal speed in opposite direction along 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 two parallel tracks if the wind is blowing with speed u along the track so that the relative velocity of the two trains with respect to the wind is in the ratio 1 is to 3 then the speed of each train must be okay so uh, every question in this uh, series i would be making sure that i explain the complete logic behind the question um, it, it it would it would be just aimed at solving the mcq it would be based on elaborating the steps it would be based on uh, you know uh, trying to understand the concept how did we come to the formulas how did we uh, uh, you know use them instead of directly applying the formula try to finding out how exactly was the formula derived okay so before we go get into this question specifically let me just give you the concept of relative velocity here say for example mm, let's take two vectors let's say this is vector b and this is vector a now relative velocity is basically velocity vector b with respect to a which means velocity of b with respect to a or in other words this means velocity of b as seen by a as seen by a now this is defined as so relative velocity vector b is defined as velocity of b minus velocity of a now what is velocity of b minus velocity of b see we know that in vector addition so in in vector algebra vector subtraction is defined as vector addition but of one of the vectors in the opposite direction so this is minus va and if this angle is theta between them this angle would become 180 minus theta because they make a linear pair so what is va minus vb is basically the relative velocity and according to the vector law addition subtraction of vectors is basically defined as addition of vectors but in the opposite direction so if you ask me to find out the difference between vector b and vector a i would actually put vector a in the opposite direction like this and then add v negative va and vb so difference of two vectors subtraction of two vectors is basically the addition of two vectors with the other one being in the opposite direction i hope this point is clear if this is clear let us see the magnitude of velocity of b with respect to a this will be equal to magnitude of velocity of b plus minus velocity of a velocity vector a now what is this equal to this is equal to root of say vb square plus va square plus 2 va vb into cos most of the students make a mistake here they take this as cos theta no this time we are talking about the com the the other angle the so the, the complement of the angle which is cos 180 minus theta now what is cos 180 minus theta see cos 180 minus theta is equal to minus cos theta in which case this expression becomes root of vb square plus va square plus 2 va vb into co i'm sorry uh, into minus cos theta which means relative velocity sorry modulus of relative velocity velocity modulus of relative velocity vector b with respect to a can be written as root of vb square plus va square minus 2 vb va cos theta so this is our expression for this is our expression for
the relative velocity of relative velocity of two vectors now let us see the case in which right so this is what we have here okay so now let us see the case in which we apply this formula to find out the relative velocity between two different uh, vectors in particular cases so let's see we have case number one now in case number one let us say there are two vectors like this so if you see the direction of two vectors they are in the same direction so we have vector a and uh, vector b with the magnitude of v1 and v2 so we have vector a and vector b now in this case velocity of b with respect to a right? so the magnitude of velocity of vector with respect to a b vector with respect to a can be given by root of b square i'm using this formula here b square plus a square minus 2 b a cos theta right so this will be equal to root of oh, okay i think i should take the other way around because we have given magnitude to be v1 v2 so let's take the magnitude so this will be equal to v1 square plus right v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 into cos theta now see what's the value of theta here when two vectors are moving in the same direction we can say that the value of theta is equal to 0 degree in which case this becomes is equal to root of v1 square plus v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 into what is cos theta it is cos 0 now what is the value of velocity of relative velocity b b is equal to is equal to root of v1 square plus v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 and therefore v b a is equal to root of v1 minus v2 the whole square thus bringing it to be velocity of b with respect to a as v1 minus v2 when the angle is 0 degree see how this 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 much of algebraic calculations is clear this is case one let us now do the comparison with respect to case two now what happens in case two is we have one vector say vector a and the other vector is coming in the opposite direction to b with magnitudes v1 and v2 and what is the value of theta here the value of theta in this case is 180 degrees right so what will be the result magnitude of uh, relative velocity v a b is equal to will be equal to root of v1 square plus v2 square minus 2 v1 v2 into cos this time it is cos 180 now what is the value of cos 180 see cos 180 degree is equal to cos pi is equal to minus one so basically keep this in mind cos n pi is equal to minus one the whole raised to n so cos one pi will be equal to minus one the whole raised to one which is equal to minus one now applying that formula here what we get is <coughs> excuse me so what we get is relative velocity v a b in this case will be equal to v1 sorry, root of v1 square plus v2 square this becomes minus 2 v1 v2 into cos 180 is minus 1 so this transforms to v a b is equal to root of v1 square plus v2 square negative into negative becomes positive plus 2 v1 v2 which further can be written as v a b is equal to v1 plus v2 why because this is equal to the root of 
v1 plus v2 the whole square now v a b is equal to v1 plus v2 when when the condition is that theta is equal to 180 degrees so this is the fundamental algebraic calculation behind the concept of relative velocity now let's come into the question so what does the question says the question says that okay i think i need to take too much cal too much of calculations in this page let me uh, let me try to take the question in a different space here okay so now we have the question in front of us again so now we can say that let's try to approach the question by drawing a rough diagram so this is let me say um, this is track one okay and then we have another track track two here and train a is moving with the vector here train b is moving along this side and we have wind flowing with velocity u is what the question says now let us make use of these two formulas and find out the relative velocity here so what is what is relative velocity of a with respect to what do we need to find respect to the wind so relative velocity of a with respect to the wind which assume is w w so this will be equal to v a minus v w right now why is it v a minus v w it is because the angle between the two vectors see this is how vector a and vector u are aligned and the angle between them is zero degree so we have written here that when the angle between them is zero degree it will be v a minus v w now in the next case the next vector it is v b w which is which is two vectors like this one u and the other is b and the angle between them now is 180 degrees which means when it is theta is 90, 180 degrees the relative velocity will be the sum of these two vectors sorry the sum of the magnitude of these two vectors now what is given in the question the question says that the relative velocity of the two trains are in the ratio 1 is to 3 which means v a w by v b w is in the ratio 1 is to 3 that is v a minus v w the whole upon v a plus v w is equal to 1 upon 3 now since the trains are moving with equal speeds right trains are moving with equal speeds we can substitute v a and v i made a small mistake here my bad this is not v a this is v p so this is v p right so this is v b this is also v b okay so v a minus v b by v b v b plus v w and this v a and v b can are both of equal speed since they are of equal speeds we can say that we can write that v a is equal to v b is equal to v and let us say v of w is given oh that's that's already given to be u okay now let us substitute this value here so we can write this v minus u by v plus u is equal to 1 by 3 which makes 3v minus 3u is equal to v plus u 3v minus uv becomes okay 3v minus v is equal to u plus 4u u, u plus u plus 3u 3v minus v is 2v so 2v is equal to 4u and therefore v is equal to 2u is the required relations which makes the correct option as option train is moving towards north with a speed of 30 meter per second a monkey is moving with a speed of 5 meter per second on the roof of the train against its motion the speed of the monkey as seen by the observer on the ground would be so this is the question that we have here so let us assume this to be the train right so this is the train what we have here is the monkey and the observer so let us first fix the direction so let us assume this to be north and this direction to be south now what is given here 
velocity of train is given to be okay uh, speed of train is given to be uh, 30 meter uh, towards north so velocity is 30 meter per second towards the north okay so velocity is 30 meter per second towards north right now a monkey is moving with a speed of 5 meter per second which means we have the monkey on the train here and this monkey is moving with a speed of 5 meter per second against its motion so man is moving sorry no, not the man the train is moving towards the north and the monkey is actually moving towards the south right which means that the motion is some somewhat like this the the monkey is trying to move like this right it it was here and it it is moving like this okay and at the same time the train moves forward direction okay so we have an observer at the ground here right and he is looking at the movement of the train as well as that of the monkey so let us first write down what is given here it is given that velocity of monk is given as minus 5 meter per second now here comes the question which velocity is given here is this velocity of the monkey the true one or it is the relative velocity or is it the velocity by which the man observes the monkey but what's actually given is it's said in the question that it is against its motion which means what's given us here is velocity of monkey with respect to train or in other words we could write we could write that velocity of monkey velocity of monkey observed by the train observed by the train is equal to minus 5 meter per second okay so the train is moving towards north the monkey is if somebody if if say for example if this person if the observer is here if this observer if this observer he stands on the train he will feel that the monkey is moving towards the south with a velocity of minus 5 meter per second now the man is right now not on the train he is in the ground Right, so we've been asked to find what will be the velocity when the man is on the ground. See, for that, what we need to understand is velocity of monkey with respect to train is given us to be minus 5. Yes, but what is this equation equal to? This is equal to velocity of monkey minus velocity of train. Okay, so again, the question comes if vm was my velocity of monkey against motion was taken to be the relative velocity then what is vm and vt good question vm is basically velocity of monkey with respect to the ground and vt is basically the velocity of the train with respect to the ground okay in which case what can we write here we can say that minus 5 is equal to velocity of monkey with respect to ground we don't know so that becomes velocity of vmg minus what is velocity of train with respect to ground it is given to be 30 meter per second i didn't check for the units it is meter per second and 5 meters okay that's correct in which case in which case what is velocity of monkey with respect to ground it becomes 30 minus 5 which is 25 or let's say or let's write it like this but it's 25 meter per second now plus 25 meter per second means that it is moving along the direction towards the north direction what is the implication of this sentence it means that when the observer is observing the monkey when the observer is observing the monkey not from the train but from the ground he feels that his velocity the velocity of the monkey is positive which means the observer will see that the monkey is moving towards the north whereas the monkey was actually moving towards the left with the velocity minus 5 meter per second but the velocity that the observer here observer in the ground he will feel that the monkey is moving 
along the direction of the train with a speed of 25 meter per second. A train of 150 meter length is going towards north direction at a speed of 10 meter per second. A bird flies at a speed of 5 meter per second towards south direction parallel to the railway track. The time taken by the bird to cross the train is equal to. Okay. So let us first assume the directions. So let us take towards right, uh, right as north and towards left as south. Which means if this is the origin, this would be J cap and this would be negative J cap. Okay. Okay. So let us first do the, the vector approach. So the velocity of train here, according to the question, velocity of vector train is basically a vector in the J direction, which has a magnitude of 10 meter per second. So this can be written as this can be written as 10 meter per second j cap. Now what is velocity of the bird? So velocity of the bird is that's the velocity of the bird is another vector which is towards the minus j towards the minus j with a magnitude of 5 meter per second. So this is equal to 5 in which direction minus j cap direction. Now let us abbreviate this as velocity of vector, velocity of train as 10j and velocity of bird as minus 5g. Now what is the relative velocity vector of bird with respect to train? Or in other words, what is the velocity of what is the velocity of bird when seen from when seen from the train. This is equal to velocity of p, right, velocity of p minus velocity of train, which is minus 5j minus 10j, which is equal to minus 15j. Or I can write this as 15 into minus j. Therefore, velocity of bird with respect to train is 15 into minus j. What is the physical meaning of this? It means that a person, a person who is standing on the train, who is standing on the train will feel that, right? So, if there is a person standing on the train, he will feel that the bird is will feel that the bird is approaching him that the bird is approaching him the bird is approaching him with a speed of with a speed of 15 meter per second towards him and not away from him right towards him in which case in which case the bird is now here and the slowly the bird will now move parallel to the train and it will cover the entire length of the train right i repeat the bird the man is observing the bird and the bird is now traveling parallel to the train and it will move like this and how much distance will it move when it has reached this so what is the velocity is equal to velocity or, or let's take what is speed is equal to speed is equal to distance by time what is the distance traveled here it is 150 time we have to find it out the speed is see always make sure that if while you're using the vector approach it should make sense so here velocity is equal to 15 to minus j which means what is magnitude of velocity magnitude of velocity is nothing but speed which is 15 so 150 by t will be equal to speed which is 15 so t is equal to 150 by 15 that is 10 which means our correct option here would be oops this is not 40 seconds this should be ideally 10 seconds the correct option is option d 10 seconds now what i'll do is i'll give you one more approach to solve this question so let's say uh, 
okay let's assume mm, should i write it here or should i make a different canvas okay let me uh, take the question once again now while we do this in the analytical method not using vector we know that what what's given is uh, v1 is given to be 10 v2 is given to be 5 and they are traveling in the opposite direction which means theta is equal to 180 degree we know that when v1 when theta is 180 degree v1 with respect to 2 is v1 plus v2 which is basically 10 plus 5 which is equal to 15 now see even though the velocity velocity is calculated in a relative manner distance remains the same right distance doesn't depend upon the frame of frame where, where in which the observer is observing it so or in other words distance is not dependent on the reference frame which means distance is a constant here and what is that constant it is given to be 150 which means velocity 1 2 can actually be written as distance by time and distance is 150 well time is t v12 we just find out to be 15 so this will be basically equal to 150 is equal to so 15 is equal to 150 by time and then time is equal to 150 by 15 thus making the answer to be 10. two trains each 50 meter long are traveling are traveling in opposite direction with the velocity of 10 and okay it's not 50 it's 15 meter per second the time of crossing is so first let us see how to solve this question directly see time of crossing would be basically equal to the total length which is 50 plus 50 the whole upon the relative velocity the total length is 100 relative velocity since the trains are moving in opposite directions the velocity will add up and the velocities are 10 and 15 so what we get is 100 by 25 which is equal to 4 and the correct option would be option D. Now let's try to understand or let's try to first visualize the concept and then try to understand how how do we actually arrive in this equation if not for relative velocity. So for that I have what I've done is I've taken a couple of diagrams set of diagrams. So see this is train 1 with length I'm going to do generalization of the lengths. So let us take not equal length, let us take some general length L1, train 2 with length L2. Okay. Train L1 is moving towards the right and L2 is moving towards the left. Now, after some time, up, let us say this this was the picture taken when the time was zero. When time t is equal to one second say for example these trains they met each other when i say they met each other i can say that the crossing has started to take place right so let me write it as crossing initial after some time what happens is the trains have somewhere let us say the crossing is in the midway right the crossing is in the midway after some time the trains has crossed completely so crossing is final crossing is final now when is the crossing initial the crossing is initial when the engine of train 1 meets engine of train 2 when is the crossing final? When the last bogey of train 1, which is this bogey, meets the last bogey of train 2. Okay. So, uh, I hope this explanation was simple and direct. So, this is the basic uh, visualization that we need to do. Now, to solve this question, a couple of things are not relevant here in this diagram. What are they? See, we don't need this diagram, the first one. Why? because it is t is equal to 0 and the crossing has not yet take place now we don't need the third diagram because it, the crossing is in midway and you can't make sense out of it so that diagram is also not required so all what we need to solve this question numerically is a set of 1 plus 2 this 1 and number 2 two figures 
to solve this question numerically so if you actually um, pay attention pay close attention i would say i have not used the word relative velocity after i started the explanation for the visualization of diagram okay so we are not going to use this concept of relative velocity we'll do it numerically using kinematic equations of motion to do that what i'll do is i'll keep this diagram aside and i'll draw a different one say something that something more easier to interpret okay so let us say this is the time of crossing when two trains are okay, let me take two unequal trains i mean trains with unequal lengths so we have train a and train b okay now when is this picture taken this picture is taken when the crossing is in the initial condition right so after some time what happens is the train say the train a would have would have moved this far and b has completed the process of crossing so now you may ask me why did b complete why can't a complete or can't it be the other way around yes it can be anyways so that's for you to decide you may try to draw a different diagram wherein a crosses b that's also fine and use the same logic you'll be arriving at the same answer for my we, i think for the the coming uh, questions based on this i'll try to do it the other way around i'll make sure that a crosses b and then the explanation will be more clear to you as of now let us try to make use of this diagram and solve the question see i'll use the parameters a has length l1 and velocity va b has the length l2 and velocity v let us try to understand the displacement of a and b respectively see if you analyze the moment of a alone okay if you analyze the moment or let us say write me write it down for the motion of for the motion of train a for the motion of train a let me mark this line as the reference line okay this was the initial position for train a now if this is the initial condition and this is the final condition how much is the displacement see the train a was here it has moved in the final position it is here which means this length this much of length is the displacement moved by a how will you find it out let me clear that also you just write you draw one line here this represents the last bogey so this represents the last bogey which means the last bogey was earlier here and it is now in this position earlier it was here it is now in this position which means this is the displacement right okay now so this is the reference line and we need to find out this distance so what i'll do is to make it more clear i will make uh, I'll, i'll mark those so let me write this reference as o okay and this as a and this is the complete train length which is l1 and let me also mark this as c so what we can say is for the motion of train a displacement of a right displacement of a is basically equal to sa so sa i can write it as what is sa sa is from the figure from the figure sa is equal to oa again from the figure what is oa oa can be written as oc minus ac let me draw that figure once again so this is o this is a and this much is c now what is oc the oc is this complete length which is l1 right so oc i can write it as l1 minus ac what is ac i don't know what is ac it, it may be any any random length so what i'll take is i'll mark that measurement ac as x so what is ac ac is x which means displacement of the train a is l minus x sorry uh, l1 minus x now let us see the same case with respect to with respect to train b 
and how are we going to do that? Okay, so we have the diagram here. Where was the initial position of train B? See, this is the initial position of train B, this line. All right. So I'll mark this position as O. And train B has moved this distance. Right. How do you find out that? So let me mark this as the last bogey of the train, which means the last bogey is here now. The last bogey was earlier here. And the last bogey has moved this pins. Let me mark that distance as um, we have taken B. Let us take this O. And this is okay, this point is D. And say this is E. So how is the distance for the motion of for the motion of which train? For the motion of train B. For the motion of train B, what do we have? We have displacement. Displacement of train B. Displacement of train B. SB is equal to OE plus D. Okay. Now, what is the measure of OE? OE, if you understand from the figure, is length of the train B, which is L2. DE from the previous figure, so this, this it is this distance what we call as X. Okay, so we have DE which is equal to X. So SB is equal to L2 plus X. All right, and on the previous inference, we have L SA is equal to L1 minus X, right? So, now let us combine these two. So, SA plus SB would be equal to L1 minus X plus L2 plus X, which means SA plus SB would be equal to L1 plus L2. Now, what is SA? SA is VA into T. Why? Because speed is distance by time and distance is therefore speed into time. Speed is VA, time is T. Plus, what is SB? SB is VB into T, which is equal to L1 plus L2. In which case, what is T? T now becomes T into V A plus V B is equal to L1 plus L2. And therefore, time of crossing T will be equal to L1 plus L2, the whole upon V A plus V B. As a special case, if V A is equal to V B and L1 is equal to L2, then what would be T equal to? T would be equal to 2 L1 by to VA or T is equal to L1 by VA is equal to L2 by VB. So this is how we derive the equation using kinematic equations of motion. So a lengthy uh, process I would say how the other the other way to solve the question hardly took a minute. This took more than 12 10 minutes to explain because it's a deep concept. So when visualization comes into picture, it's always take some time to explain. And I would say it would take a uh, effort from your side, maybe you'll have to go through this explanation once or twice, and then draw it on your own, do it on your own once or twice, and then things will become clear. Having said so, let's move on to the next question. 175 meter long train is traveling along a straight track with a velocity 72 km per hour. A bird is flying parallel to the train in the opposite direction with velocity 18 km per hour. Then the time taken by the boat, okay, it's not <laughs> not boat, it's <laughs> time taken by the bird to cross the train. The bird to cross the train is equal to, okay. So let's try to do the conventional method first using loss of, uh, using equations of motion for which we need a diagram. Let us say this is the train. 
which is represented by AB. Okay. And we have a bird which is moving in the opposite direction. AB train is moving in right, bird is moving towards the left. So after some time, what will happen is the bird will start crossing the train which means if we draw a reference axis here the bird and the train will meet first right so this is the this is a this is b mm, okay let's do one thing let's let's mark this as ac and this is bird b okay so we have ac and the bird B. Now the bird and the train meet. After some time, see the bird is still moving, right? The bird still has a velocity towards the left and the train has a velocity towards the right. So the bird will move after some time. Let us take the bird is here now. Okay, so the bird is here, which means the bird has moved this far. All right. And AC is also moving along the uh, right side so AC will also make a displacement let us take that displacement to be this so we have AC now like this all right now we'll consider the mo motion of the points A and B so for the motion along uh, or let us say for the motion of for the motion of point B, what is distance moved by distance moved by B? See, distance moved by B will be equal to distance moved by B will be equal to. Let us take it as S B would be equal to the final position minus the initial position. Let us say the initial position is O and the final position is B, which means the distance moved is B O. Do we know that distance? No, we don't. So let us assume that value to be x. So this is equal to x. Now, similarly, what is distance moved by distance moved by a? Distance moved by a would be equal to say S A is equal to if I mark this reference point as O, it would be equal to O A, right? This distance. Because A was earlier here, A was in this position, it has moved to, it was over here, it has moved now to this point. So, what is OA from the figure? See, OA from the figure is basically equal to AC minus OC, right? What is AC? AC is the length of the train. Let us take the length of the train to be L minus what is OC? We just wrote OC to be, OC would be equal to x because the bird just crossed right so i think the diagram should be more clear here it it should be it should overlap the bird this should oh like so this this it is here the point of b should be right okay now okay now the figure is more clear now we can otherwise say that distance moved by A plus distance moved by B is equal to distance SA plus SB which is equal to L minus X plus X which is equal to L. Now, when we consider the integral point, see the bird is moving with a velocity VB and the train is moving with a velocity VA and since both of them meet together at the same time, the displacement the, co the time should be common to both VB and VA will meet at time t, which means distance moved by B in time t will be equal to VB into t. Distance moved by A in time t will be equal to VA into t, which is both equal to, sorry, which is sum of both which is equal to L. Now, what is VA? We, do we know the value of VA? Yes, V is velocity of train which is given to be 72 km per hour. So, 72 km per hour will be converted to meter per second. What we get is 20 meter per second. What is velocity of bird? It is given 18. So, 18 into 5 by 18 will give you 
5 meter per second. So, velocity of A is 20 meter per second, velocity of B is 15 meter per second. The whole into time will give you the length of the train which is given to be 175 meters. In which case, what is the value of T? T is 175 upon 25 which is equal to 7 seconds. That gives the correct answer to be uh, we don't have the correct option. I think this is not 4, this is meant to be 7 seconds. Okay. So, this was the method where we use the conventional approach using equations of motion. Now, some students ask me, so why can't we use other equations of motions which are primarily v square minus u square is equal to 2a. So, why can't we use v is equal to u plus a t or why can't we use s is equal to u t plus half a t square. See what you don't realize is this is a uniform motion and therefore the value of acceleration here is equal to 0 in which case this is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 right. So, these two equations do not make sense here. Now, the third equation does make sense because as acceleration is equal to 0 s will be equal to u t that is what we have taken here v a t into or let us say s b is equal to u b into t is what we have taken here right. So, that is how we solve using equations of motion. Now, if you ask me to solve the same question but using the method of vector approach how will it look like see this is b right b is moving towards the left. So, I will take this as negative i cap ok. The direction is negative i cap and what is the velocity by which, what is the speed by which it is moving? It is moving with 18 ok not 18 it is moving with 5 meter per second right. Now, what is the moment of what is how can we characterize the moment of a? It is towards the plus i cap and what is the speed? It is 20 meter per second right. So, velocity of b is minus 5 i cap, velocity of a is plus 20 i cap, in which case what would be velocity of a with respect sorry what would be velocity of a with respect to b would be equal to velocity of a as seen by as seen by the bird b which is equal to velocity of a minus velocity of b which is equal to 20 i cap minus minus 5 i cap which is equal to 20 i plus 5i and therefore, velocity of A with respect to B is 25 i cap. Now, if velocity of A with respect to B is 25 i cap, what is magnitude of velocity of A with respect to B? It would be equal to 25 meter per second. If the magnitude of velocity that is if speed is equal to 25 meter per second and if length is equal to 100 meter sorry if the length is equal to 175 meters what is the time time would be equal to 175 by the speed which is 25 thus giving the answer to be 7 seconds ok. So, this is how you use the vector approach of course, this is relative velocity again. Now, the direct application of relative velocity would be direct application velocity relative velocity would be see this is moving with 5 meter per second train is moving with 20 meter per second since they are moving in the opposite direction um, let us say this is vb this is va since the angle between them is 180 degrees we can say the relative velocity of a with respect to b is va plus vb which is 5 plus 20 which is equal to 25 and therefore, 
time will be equal to the distance which is not relative because it's going to be the same by relative velocity which is equal to 175 by 25 can equal to 7 seconds so this is how you approach one question in multiple ways see the logic remains the same but to arrive at it takes multiple approaches or maybe uh, uh, two or three approaches and uh, this is this the method three was one which will use when you solve mcqs and you can use the other two methods while solving a, a subjective question unless and until it is not specifically mentioning you to solve using relative velocity so i hope that's clear let us do a couple of more problems using the same concept so that things become really clear to you two trains of same length 75 meter and moving with speed 12 meter per second and 30 meter per second on parallel tracks find out the time of crossing if they move in the same direction and if they move in the opposite direction see this is a very similar question to one to the one what we did earlier so for those people who are directly onto this question um, i would say i'll solve the solve both of the cases using relative velocity as well as the um, the conventional method or the traditional method so using okay in the sense that we have done relative velocity the last video itself let us go for further detail understanding the two cases so we have case 1 case 1 where the trains are moving in the the trains are moving in the same direction for that i'll take a reference diagram so let's say um, this is the train 1 or say this is train a okay and this is train b so this is the point where they actually meet right now when the crossing is complete okay so uh, the last video i told you that um, it can take place any the crossing can take place anywhere so let me just use this example to um, to explain that statement so let us say the crossing was taking place here okay and we don't know from what distance is this has the train a moved so let me mark that distance as x so this is train a and train b okay now what we'll do is we'll split this diagram into two one for the reference of a and the other for the reference of b so this is train now i'll erase off train b from the picture because we don't want train b the things will become more clear to you okay now what is the displacement of a see if i mark this as the initial position of a right so this is initial position of a and this is final position of a in which case um do we need to mark that yes so let us mark this as o mm, d and e okay so we can say that the displacement of a which is sa is equal to the final position minus initial position which is basically here okay uh, did i make a mistake yes uh, it was not the final position the final position is see this is the final position right okay so this is the final position which means the displacement here would be o e right now what is o e o e is basically this line o d plus d e so o e is o d plus d e what is o d see o d is the length of the train a which i assume as l1 so what i get is l1 plus x so displacement of x is l1 plus x now let us consider the same reference diagram for the moment of b right for the moment of b alone okay but this time we need a to mark that as is okay all right okay now let us see the first the final the initial position of a so initial position of b so this was the initial position of b and this is now the final position so this is initial position of b and this is final position of b let me mark this point as the initial position this line 
and this line and let us mark that as x y mm, maybe this is z and this is oh okay too many convenient things i'm making it complex sorry guys so a displacement of uh, b would be equal to the final minus initial position final minus initial position which is basically o x so we have x o length what is x o length x o length is x y plus y z plus z o now interestingly here what we need to understand is if we overlap the previous diagram see we have the train a here right and we have the train a here too because that's how the overtaking place is which means this much length is l2 and this length parallel to here is l1 so xy is basically l2 plus l1 from the figure this much length is l2 this length is a train a which is l1 so we have xy which is equal to l2 plus l1 now what is y is it we don't know why is it so let's take that value as x plus do we know is it o c is it o is basically the length of the train l a train a which is l1 so this is train a with length l1 this is also train a with length l1 so that term is basically l1 and now let us see we have two equations which all are they sb is equal to l2 plus l1 plus x plus 1 and sa here is equal to l1 plus x so now what we need to do is we need to get rid of this term x right this term x and how will we do that we will do that by subtracting a from sa from sp which will give you l2 plus l1 plus x plus l1 minus l1 minus x which case these two terms get eliminated and what do we have now we have sb minus sa is equal to l2 plus l1 now are we done with the question no so if sb minus sa is equal to l2 plus l1 what is sb sb is velocity of b into t what is sa sa is velocity of a into t what is l2 plus l1 is the sum of length of the trains now so this will be the case now if i take t common here what do we get t is equal to l2 plus l1 the whole upon vb minus va so this will be the time of crossing time of crossing when the trains are in the same direction when the trains are moving in the same direction now let us come back to the numerical see what we have here is what we have here is the velocity is given to be sorry l1 is equal to l2 is given to be 75 meter velocity of the train a is given to be of vp is given to be 30 meter per second but 30 30 would, would give you 75 by 30 minus 12 is 18 sorry uh, 150 by 150 by 80 by is a round number which are options okay I think I have taken some mistake. Okay, 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 okay. All right, there's a mistake that I did while writing the question. It's not 30, it's 13 meter per second. Okay, now it makes sense. Right, so now VA is equal to 12, VB is equal to 30. So we can say that time of crossing when they are moving in the same direction is equal to 75 plus 75, the whole upon. 30 not not 30 it is 13 which is it is 13 so it is by 13 minus 12 which is 150 so time of crossing when they are moving in the same direction is 150 there are two options with 150 okay let us find the other option also so we know that as we did in the previous problem we know that time time of crossing when um, when they were moving in the opposite direction was l1 plus l2 the whole upon 
VB plus VA which is equal to 150 by 12 plus 13 which is equal to 150 by 25 which is equal to 6 so time of crossing time of crossing when they are in the opposite direction is equal to 6 which means we have two options 150 and 6 the correct option is option C 150 and 6 two trains are moving in the same direction with the same velocity of 30 km per hour they are separated by a distance of 5 km a car moving in the opposite direction meets the two trains at an interval of 4 minutes what is the velocity of the car okay so first let's draw a diagram and then let's try to understand the concept okay so what's given here is say this is a track there are two trains right the distance between them is given to be 5 kilometers we call them as a and b with velocity va with velocity vb both of which is given to be 30 kilometer per hour now Another car, or let us say any any train or car, another body, C, it crosses this with a velocity VC. Now to explain the concept of relative velocity, see what I'll do is I will convert this figure by reducing it into two components out of three so now what I'll say here is this complete representation is as equal as saying that C is passing B to reach A is as equal as saying C with respect to B is traveling towards A I would repeat that sentence once again C passing B to reach A can is equivalent to v b with respect to c reaching a okay which means i can eliminate the two diagrams and just write one diagram here like this and what will i write here i will write b and i will write c and instead of v b i'll write v bc okay now i can even make this further simple how see it doesn't matter you can actually neglect this body because all what we need is this distance which is five kilometers and there is one object moving like this with the velocity of v bc and the time covered is given in given as four minutes all right now what is vbc see vbc is basically relative velocity of v with respect relative velocity of b with respect to c which is equal to and what is the physical meaning it means velocity of b as seen by C okay so what is that equal to since B is towards the right say for example and since C is towards the right or left the angle between them is 180 degree in which case relative velocity will be the sum of the two velocities which means it is VB plus VC so we can say that VBC is equal to VB plus VC. Now how do we consider the motion? For the motion along, for the motion along the path, let us name this path as XY, XY, what is 
velocity is equal to velocity will be equal to displacement by time what is the velocity here velocity here is vb plus vc which is equal to what is the displacement the displacement is 5 kilometers what is the time it is 4 minutes so what is vb vb is given in the question as 30 kilometer per hour so we can answer 30 plus vc is equal to 5 by 4 now we need to convert 4 into hours 4 minutes into hours so I'll let it as 4 by 60 so we can further write that 30 plus vc is equal to 5 into 60 by 4 so 120 plus 4 vc is equal to 300 right and vc will be equal to 300 minus 120 whole upon 4 therefore vc is equal to 180 by 4 which makes vc is equal to 45 kilometer per hour and thus our correct option is option p a train 120 meter long is moving in the direction in a direction with a speed of 20 meter per second a train b moving with 30 meter per second in the opposite direction and 130 meter 130 meter long crosses the first train in a time so this is again a very typical question based on relative velocity so what we have here is train a which is 120 meters long and we have another train which is 130 meter long this is moving towards the left towards the right the velocity of 30 meter per second and this is moving with the velocity of 20 meter per second so for further clarity I'll write it as VA and VB okay so we've been asked to find out the time taken right okay so this figure can actually be simplified and can be converted like this an object is moving with the velocity of moving with the velocity of b with respect to a okay Those, so okay okay so we can say that a body is traveling v b with v with, the, with velocity v b with respect to a and covering a distance of 120 plus 130 that is 250 meter okay now i think the rest is just mathematical calculations we know that vba is equal to since they are moving in the opposite direction the angle between them is 180 degree therefore vba will be equal to vb plus va and vb is therefore equal to 20 plus 30 which is equal to 50 kilometer okay not kilometer per hour it's 50 meter per second now what is time is equal to okay so what what is uh, velocity v is equal to uh, distance by time so what is time is equal to distance by the velocity we have found out the distance is 250 and the time sorry and the velocity we have found out is 50 so the answer is is the distance in kilometer 120 meter meter okay so fine so the answer would be five seconds so the correct option is okay option is none of these two trains each traveling with a speed of 30 kilometer per hour and approaching each other on the same okay two tra trains are okay and two trains are, ah doesn't matter and are approaching on the same on the same track a bird that can fly at 50 km per hour flies off from the one train when they are at 90 km apart and heads directly for the other train on reaching the other train it flies back to the first and so forth total distance traveled by not by the bird excuse me it's by the by the bird is okay so it's a very a very simple question though it sounds 
tough because of the length of the question. It's really simple. So it goes like this. There's a train A and there is another train B. Right? The distance between them is 90 kilometers. Velocity of A is given to be 30 kilometer per hour and velocity of B is also given to be 30 kilometer per hour. Now let's see what is velocity of A with respect to B. Since both of them are in the opposite direction, the angle between them is 180 degree and therefore the relative velocity will be equal to VA plus VB, right? And the distance traveled is 90 kilometers. So how long will the, okay, let me just write it down. So time taken by A to meet B will be equal to time taken by the bird to fly between them. To fly between them. Okay. Now what is the time taken by A to meet B? It will be T is equal to 90 by VAB which is equal to 90 by 30 plus 30. So time will be equal to 90 by 60, 9 by 6 or 3 by 2. Which means the bird will be in the air for 3 by 2 minutes. Okay. Now, what is the, what is the velocity of the bird? What is the speed of the bird? Speed of the bird is given to be speed of the bird is given to be 50 km per hour. And what is the time? Time taken by it is 3 by 2 minutes. In which case, what would be the distance travel? Distance travel will be equal to speed into time, which is equal to 50 into 3 by 2. So 2 50 25. So we get 25 into 3, which is equal to 75 kilometer per hour. So the correct option here is option B. When two bodies move uniformly towards each other, the distance between them decreases by 8 meter per second. If both bodies move in the same direction with different speeds, the distance between them increases by 2 meter per second. The speed of the body will be. Okay, so What's given here is so let us try to understand the, what the first part of the sentence says. When two bodies move uniformly towards each other, the distance between them decreases by 8 meter per second. That is logical because they are moving towards each other. So, say if this is at t is equal to 0, when they come closer, right, when they come closer at t is equal to 1, this distance s1 and s2, s1 minus s2 would give you. Uh, 8 meters is you know, it decreases by 8 meter per second is, a, is the basic concept. Now, if you try to understand this using the concept of relative velocity, see what it indirectly implies is let me call this what is a and b when they are moving in the opposite direction, theta is equal to 180 degree, and when they are moving in the same direction, theta is equal to 0 degree. So when theta is equal to 180 degree, it implies that VA plus B, VB is the relative velocity, which is given to be 8 meter per second. The other way around, VA minus VB is given to be, increases by 2 meter per second is given to be 2. So now it's just linear equation. You add these two, what you get is 2 VB is, VA is equal to 10 and therefore VA will be equal to 5. Now, if VA is 5, VB, VB will be equal to 8 minus 5, which is equal to 3. And therefore, the correct option would be 5 and 3.